Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today I'm going to show you how I made my very own luck dragon. If you're around a couple weeks ago, you would have already seen Rockbiter. He's also on my channel, and these guys are made from the same materials. So with that said, keep in mind that he's not a soft doll, so he's not much of a cuddler, but he does look soft and fluffy, and he's great for display. So I would consider him an art doll. There's no clay in him, and there's no wires in him. He's all foil tape and paper towels, same as Rockbiter. Except for this guy's got the added fur. There's going to be a video for this guy. It should be tonight or tomorrow. It will be released. I've already filmed and edited it. I just need to get it up to YouTube. But first we have to make a dragon. So let's set this guy aside. And I'll get back to him at the end of the video and tell you more about him. Now we're going to dive into the video, guys. Remember there are timestamps in the pin comment below. So you can move around the video as freely as you wish. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you find the video helpful, and feel free to share with your friends. I hope you enjoy making your dragon, and remember if you do make one, I'd love to see. Post pictures on my Facebook page, Where the Gnomes Live, or tag me on Instagram, Oyella underscore crafts. Both those links are in the pinned comment below. Let's get started. To make his body, I use aluminum foil, masking tape, paper towel, and a regular white glue. Okay, so the foil, I'm using the strong one, which enables me to use a lot less than I would if I was using a cheaper foil. Okay, you can use whatever you have on hand. Just make sure it doesn't say non-stick because you need the masking tape to stick to it. Cheap paper towels. Don't get anything that's a three-ply. I just used a Walmart brand. No name. I think it's called um, Good Value or something like that. Just a cheap paper towel. And he has two coats of fur. There's a base coat and then there's a top coat where I've added this longer bits here. So for the base coat, I'm using white acrylic yarn, and you don't need this much. Actually, we hardly use any yarn at all, so just a small bundle will do. And for the longer bits, I use this fake sheepskin rug. I think it was under 20 bucks, but I'm sure craft stores actually sell for like this just for crafting purposes, so have a look for that. And to attach both of those, I used tacky glue, and I think this is the best glue to use for it. And to be honest, I haven't actually tried any of the regular white glue when I was attaching fur. I've only ever used tacky glue because it grabs fast and it dries really fast. Yeah, so if you can, find some tacky glue. And for paint colors, if you make a white dragon like I have, then you need uh, white acrylic craft paint. I also use black, red, cinnamon brown, and a pink, and a variety of different sizes of brushes. And you can see I did use sequins for his scales, but keep in mind, if you can't find any on a string or get any sequins where you are living, don't worry about it. Uh, if you look online at other handmade felcores, they don't have sequins. Most of them don't have sequins on them. And they look just as beautiful. Okay, so I found these years ago in a thrift store attached to this crocheted ribbon. And when I first saw it, I thought of him. And I thought one day I'll make them, and here I am. Luckily for me, when I cut the string off of here, they stayed together in a string. So that saved me a lot of work. When I got it off the ribbon, I realized it's a peachy color and I wanted pink. So I ordered some pink online. When they got here, I realized it's, I'm going to spend hours stringing those together, and I didn't want to do that, so I just left them. These are beautiful, though. They're called iridescent white round cup, and you can order them already strung, but it was too late. By the time these guys arrived, I realized it was going to take too long to order anymore, so I just used what I had on hand. Okay, and the other thing not necessary to the project is this ribbon I also had in my stash. It's metallic. Very beautiful, and I used it to add scales to his cheekbones. And a Varathane. If you don't have Varathane, you can also use a clear nail polish. And I use that in his mouth to give him a little bit of a shine. And also his eyeballs. For his eyelashes, you could buy yourself some fake eyelashes from the dollar store. But I actually just used some bristles off of a soft paintbrush. And I made my own. Which I'll show you how to do in this video. And one more thing for supplies list that's not necessary. This is just for those of you like me who like texture. So... When I came to his back end here, and also his belly, I was thinking, what could I add there to add that dragon-type texture? And I thought of this stuff here. It's burlap. You can find burlap in your dollar stores. You can also find it in orange oranges, orange bags. <laughs> I use them for, for craft supplies here. I glued that on, and it's a great texture. The problem is I didn't really spend too much time on it, and I kind of screwed up the color. But for my next dragon, if I ever do make one, I'll be using this again. So it's just something to keep in mind and something to play around with for added texture for those texture lovers out there. When I began recording this video, I started with a different dragon and then I lost hope in him when I got to his head and I'll show you that dragon. So this is the dragon that I started making in the video. So 
instead of scrapping all the time I spent filming and editing that part, I left that in. So you'll see me forming his body, but I'll stop in with edits and I'll show you where I made differences when I make him. And then you can take from that what you need and make your own shaped dragon and your own size dragon. What I would suggest you do is keep an image beside you. So I have my iPad here. I can Google images on that. Find an image that you like of the dragon and keep it beside you and use that as a reference. And just use my video to show you how to attach the limbs and stuff like that. So with all of that said, guys, let's get started. Let's make a dragon. All right, so I worked out the basic shape, which kind of looks like a fish, to be honest. And now I'm just adding extra bits where I think there should be some bulk, like the hind legs. And then once I added that, this looked funny, so I'm just adding another piece here. So the best thing to do is just keep that picture, whatever picture you're going to use, beside you, and just keep referring to that. Uh, the other thing was, because this is a solid piece, a little hard to keep shaping with the fingers, so sometimes I'd stand up and push down with my hands to flatten out any areas, like here. Okay, so I'm just standing up now. And I just push down. I'm pushing on my palm to flatten out what I want flattened out. He's a solid little guy. And I added a spine here, just like I showed you. And I went all the way down, mostly all the way down the tail. So whenever I'm making limbs uh, that I'm attaching, I always leave the top open, just like that, so it has something bigger to grab onto. And then I just do the basic shape real quick, and then I'm not stressing too much about it. I'll see if it works. And once it works, then I can build onto this part. See, for this one here, I just I did the same thing, and then I just figured out, oh, the paw needs to go there, so I'm going to add a little bit to the paw. So I'll just take a little bit of foil, and I'll put it where the, where the uh, front of the paw should be, flatten it out as I need to. And you can use your masking tape as you go along if you need to hold anything in place. If you add a little bit of foil here, and it's going to fall off, then you can put a little piece of tape there and keep working on the leg. But at least you have the basic shape figured out, and then you can just work on it from there. So what I'll do is I'll tape up his leg. Alright, so now I can tape that into place. Okay, I like it, but so I think it needs a little bit more bulk right here. Just roll up some foil and add that right there. So yeah, you can play around those shapes after they're taped in place. You can add on at any time, even if you've taped it up. When I put his legs on, I didn't use any hot glue. I just put that piece on and then I taped it in, which worked fine. But I noticed later on when I was working on his body that his legs tended to separate a little bit from his body, so I would, I would re-tape them. So when I got to this guy, I decided to use hot glue as well. So when I put that big piece on, I hot glued it in first and then used the tape. And I just found that to be a bit more stable when I was working on his body late, later. So if you do have hot glue, go ahead and use it. It's, um, yeah, it just adds to the strength as you're working. So for the other side, uh, in the pictures that I've seen where he's kind of laying in that position, the other side, the legs aren't really seen. So I was just working on a back leg. And it's going to look kind of funny, but if his leg is not really seen, then it would just be tucked underneath him, just to give him somewhat of a leg. <laughs> so when someone turns him over, there is a leg there. Same thing. I think I'm going to stick it underneath so it raises his body up just a little bit there. So a quick measurement for you. His body is about 12 inches from the rump to his neck. And this guy has a little bit more going on. From his rump to his shoulders is 12 inches, there about. And then I have about one, two, three inches for his neck. 
and don't worry about the neck stopping just build it and leave the neck as it is and then start working on his head because later on I'm going to show you how to do the smooth transition and work his head into his neck and I did the same process for both dragons and it worked out great and you'll notice that his body design too like this one is more straight and this one isn't a curve so he's like he's cr turning around and he's looking back this way this way <laughs> And this guy is just laying there and he's looking up, looking at us. And either one is fine. It's just that I, when I decided to make him again, I thought I'll just add a little bit more flair to his uh, body shape and all that. And then his front leg is way too low here. There's not much going on there. So this one, I decided to give him a little bit of a shoulder hump. And the other difference I made, like I said, he was laying down. So his back legs are tucked underneath him. And this guy has two legs on the other side sticking out but kind of in a way that he's moving and his tail is flipping up and over. This tail is just sitting down on the table and this one is flipping up. And this guy has a bit of a neck where this guy has none. All right guys, so in the next clip, we're gonna start making his head. And don't worry that it's the first dragon that I was making because I started this guy off the exact same way. Where I start making differences, I'll come back in with edits and I'll show you. So it's all the same process and I did everything the same way. So let's get started. And you don't have to do it that way, you can just do the front part first and then add on the head after. But there I go. I've already got it started. So I'll just keep building onto this. But I was just thinking, how can I transition from the neck to the head and make it look fairly normal and yeah because that's quite bulky in there so what I'm going to do I've just taken some foil rolled off and then fold it in half so it's a bit thicker and I have this bigger piece here which I'm going to wrap around see that so that grabs onto the neck and I can position the head on it so I'm going to go ahead and tape this piece in Okay, it still looks pretty funny, but I'm going to incorporate this part into the head. And what I'll do is I'll attach the lower jaw to this piece here. So I gotta bring this up way up here. Okay, so I think that's the best way, for me anyway, that's the best way of attaching the head and getting my own mind wrapped around transitioning from the neck to the head area. I think that works really well. So once I get him attached on there, which won't be for a while because I want to work on his face details first, I will build out this head bit so it works seamlessly into the neck. All right, so we have to work on his face a bit more in his head shape. It has to come out some and the top here has to come out and overlap the bottom but the bottom I don't think is wide enough yet either so let's work on that okay so I think the bottom is wide enough now I could tape it but I'll just wait until I get the top part done first
So I just shaped the top part a little bit so I can give, give them some front lips and I'll work on that a bit more. Again, as long as we get the basic shape down, then we're on our way. I wonder if we shouldn't just tape that in now. I think I will. I'm going to put a piece of tape around that. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of foil and build out the cheek. It's a bit difficult to see because they both have fur on, but where I went wrong with this guy was when I was adding those little bits of foil in the side of the face, I was bringing the foil down too far in this area. So what ended up happening was I made his face too fat here. Where this one, you can see it's kept more narrow. So when you add the little bits to give him some shape to his head, keep those bits up here where his eyes will go. So you shape out this way. Looks more like a bicycle seat. And this one's just short and stubby. And the other mistake I made was I added too much foil on top of his head so it made his head too high here. And this one I kept much lower so it's more sloped. And again, I would suggest putting a picture up beside you and just keep referring to that. Okay, so at this point, I'm thinking of just taping him up now because I'm getting a little bit foil blind. And this happens to me. I need to tape it up and then I can see where things are supposed to go. I haven't attached this head yet. And what I'm thinking I should do, put some paper towel in there before I attach his head. Because I need to paint in here black before I attach his head. And I need to have another surface. I can't just paint masking tape. So, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'm going to add paper towel inside there. Alright, so for his jaw and his body as well, we uh, stacked the paper towel and then just ripped all four sides. And I just poured a little bit of the white glue in there. And what I do with mine is I just add a touch of water and that just makes it easier to work with. And that's just for some white glues. Some white glues are pretty runny on their own and some white glues like this one here is pretty thick. So I tend to water mine down. Then I just take a piece of paper towel, run it along the surface, fold the dry sides together and then just pull the excess glue off. And then just make sure that both sides are saturated with the glue. And now that piece is ready for applying. And when you add additional pieces, especially on his body, you want to overlap the sides. All sides should be overlapped. So let's get started. And I'll lay it over top his lip. And you know, I might be adding to the outside yet. I might be adding foil and tape still, but I, I'm not worried about that. I'm just wanting to get the very interior done of his, of his mouth. And then I can paint him. And let's work on his details. So I'm just propping him up on something a little bit higher so I can reach him because I'm having to look over a camera here. All right, guys, so I removed all the clips showing how I shaped his head and everything because obviously that's the part that's bothering me about this guy. And I'll show you how I add some more details here in the next few clips. But first I'll show you how I did the nose for this guy because it's the exact same process I used for this guy except for I lowered this part and I raised up this part. So he has a more pronounced nose. But it's all the same process. Let's do the bridge of his nose first. And now I will work on his nose and the front of his lip here. And now I'm thinking about his top lip. 
So we're going to be doing this in pieces because it's just easier for me to figure things out in pieces. You know what I should do actually? I should make a little a little thing underneath here so this piece sticks out a little bit more. Now let's see how that looks. Yeah, much better. We will tape this into place now, the top piece. And I'm going to make an indent. Alright guys, in the next few clips I'm going to be working on the jaw and the teeth and the gums of that dragon there. And I just wanted to show you this one real quick because I did things, you know, slightly different because I knew what I was doing this time around. So on that one, I hadn't decided yet what I was going to be doing with teeth and all that, so I decided I was going to paint everything black inside, but you don't have to do that. Uh, the bottom part, because I did end up doing gums, teeth, and a tongue, the bottom part I just did like a fleshy co color, and then the teeth of course, and the gums a different color, and the tongue, and um, glued all that together. Now this is the top part, so I've worked the teeth into the top part already. And then um, the back part is black because we're not going to see that anyway. Because you don't even really have to paint on the very inside, of course, because, you know, we're not going to see that. I just went all the way because in case anybody wanted to have his mouth, you know, a little bit more open. Maybe he's smiling or something or maybe he's laughing and you can see further into his mouth. So it all depends on how wide the mouth is going to be and how far you're going to see inside. But I'll leave all those clips in there and you can see how it's done. I'm going to paint the bottom of the jaw on the inside black. So that will be dry when I need to attach these pieces together. I decided to go ahead and do this side as well, so I don't have to worry about it later. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of um, bulk to his bottom lip. I was looking at that and I can see that he, he does need it there. Okay, so when we add a new piece of foil to an existing piece, the, the masking tape is just to cover up the foil. And when we get our paper towel, that's the part that's going to keep everything in place because the foil will not hold the paper towel by itself. So you got to have the masking tape on there in order for the paper towel to stick. And of course, guys, if I had been thinking ahead, I would have done this at the same time I did that because this is my first and only time making him. We're just going to do what we, what we do, and then you can figure it out while you're making him, then you'll know what to do ahead of time. Once that paper towel is dry, those lips are permanently in place. They have become one solid unit with the original piece because we overlap the paper towel onto the old piece. All right, it is dry, and I did that before I went to bed last night, and then I realized he has teeth. <laughs> so I'm going to have to add those today, and I'm going to paint his lips real quick. And All right, and now I'm thinking about teeth. So I just rolled up some foil. I'm going to cover this with uh, masking tape. I'm just splitting the top to make it easier to roll over. I don't know if this is going to help or not. All right, I'll set this under the fan and let it dry and we'll be right back. Okay, this isn't completely dry yet, but I just thought I would go over it. I can see those lines through the paper towel, so that does help. Okay, I'm just doing my second coat now and I was reminded that Paint cracks if you paint over anything that's been dipped in glue. So that's normal. And you just have to do two or three coats to take care of that problem. They're not completely dry yet, but they're dry enough to the touch that I can try this out. I have a fine tip black paint pen. So I'm just going to start in the back, even though it's not going to be seen, just to see what I'm up against here. I think that'll do the trick, guys. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit of burnt sienna. And again, I'll start in the back just to make sure. But I was just thinking of adding a little strip of gum 
in there. And I would do it with paper towel. And this will take a little bit to dry because I am going to bunch it up. I'm going to let that dry. And again, I'm not going to see anything back here, so I'm not going to worry about that. But uh, we'll let this dry and then I'll... All right, so that is dry to the touch and I can paint it now. It'll continue drying because it is bunched up, but as long as it's dry to the touch, I can paint it. And I did push this down, so I got an indent of where the teeth are going to fit in there. So now I'm going to take my burnt sienna. Probably could use a hint of red in there. So after this is dry, I'll just uh, put a little bit of red on top. It's still drying, but I'm just going to dab on a little bit of red. <laughs> as, I'm, <laughs> as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about dragon dentures. <laughs> and if my job ever fails me, I know what I can do. <laughs> I can go work for the dragons. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, so of course I'm going to have to add a tongue now. I wasn't planning on it because you can't really see it in there anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. And there is some pictures of him online with his tongue kind of hanging out, so that's an option as well. So again, just rolled up foil, put the masking tape on and then the paper towel and let it dry. What I'm going to do is glue this down. I'll use tacky glue. <laughs> you can see a tongue in there. That's kind of that's kind of awesome. And you can see I gave them some top teeth as well. They're still drying. But um, yeah, didn't have to do too much because those are barely seen. But, oh, and I also painted up top. Which brings me to this. I'll just give you a little tip here. If you use a Varathane or a clear nail polish to give it a shine, it'll look like the inside of his mouth is wet. I was just looking at pictures of the dragon and his lips are a little bit too pink so I'm just going to tone them down with some antique white in my feather brush. Once I tone them down I will cover it up again with the, um, the varnish. Alright guys, in the next few clips we're going to be attaching the top of his head to his jaw, like permanently attaching it. And this is also where things started going wrong because after I got the head attached and it worked out perfectly. Um, yeah, I'll just show you the other side here. It worked out great, but what I did wrong was I kept adding foil to the top of his head and to the sides, and I kept adding and adding, and pretty soon his head was too big and too wide. Okay? So for this guy, same process as I'm going to show you for that one in the next few clips. He's got a longer neck, of course. And just add the foil like I showed you and just keep an eye on your shape and everything and remember that there's going to be fur added and ears added as well. So if things look a little funny it's okay. Like the ear is going to hang down here and over in front of his leg. So this is going to take care of itself. And he's going to have an ear hanging off of here so that's going to look okay. And I didn't worry too much about adding way too much to his head although you can see little bits was added here and there just to kind of you know even out the sides of his head and stuff I'm going to give you the measurements of the head only for those of you who want it because I do get me messages sometimes why didn't you give me measurements <laughs> I don't want you to get hung up on the measurements though um, your dragon could be way bigger or way smaller right but since I did measure the body for you I'll measure the head for you and from here to the furthest part on the back of his head is nine inches the widest point in his head is five and a half inches, I believe. Yeah, five and a half inches. From here to about here is four and a half inches. And the most narrow part of his snout is two and three quarters inches. And his head stands off the table, the top of his head stands off the table, about six and a half at this bump here. He's got a little bit of a ridge up there. head kind of resembles a bicycle seat doesn't it so you will be adding little bits of foil and stuff to you know connect the back of his mouth there 
So there, I left about four inches open here. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll put a piece of tape around just to hold his head on there. I have the hot glue gun heating up because um, I want to attach some foil to the back of his head because I'm going to be building out the back part of his head here. And I'm thinking what I should do is prop his head up so it stays in that one position. I'm going to take his eyeballs out. They're looking at me kind of weird. <laughs> and yeah, I'll prop his, his um, something underneath here so when I'm working on the back of his head, this will stay in the one position. Yeah, I think like that. So here's where I'm starting to overlap the jaw, the bottom jaw and the top jaw. So I'm overlapping with the foil. Okay, so once you have the head attached and you're happy with the shape and you're finished with your foil work on his head and his neck, you can go ahead and tape all of that up. And then we can continue working on this part. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna work on this side off camera because it's really difficult to see in there. My hands will just be in the way. So I'll do the one side and then we'll come back and we'll do this side together. Okay, so I'm gonna do this side and I'm gonna work with hot glue as well. So I just glue in the front part and then I continue shaping because it's too hard to do it otherwise and it keeps falling off and stuff. So I just shaped it up and around his gum. So I'll get that attached first. And I split a little section for his nostril there. So I could work it around. And that hot glue is very hot. Okay, and then keep a picture beside you of what his design is like because it's a little bit weird here. Well, not weird, it's got a dramatic kind of flare. <laughs> and it's easier if you're looking at a picture. I just wrap the foil underneath the existing gum, but not too far because you don't want to have to paint too much in there. When we do the paper towel, we're going to wrap it underneath as well. And then we can just touch up the paint on the inside of the gum. Alright, I think that looks pretty good and just a note that this part here will be painted. There won't be any fur on that so you want to work out the um, the wrinkles now that you have in there. And this will be covered with fur, this part here. And all of this will be covered with fur so the little wrinkles in there won't matter as much. But now we can go ahead and do the paper towel work on him. And again you're going to see me working on the original dragon because it's the same process uh, for both dragons. So. Alright guys, for this stage, make sure to protect your table because there will be some dripping and you stack your paper towels and just tear down all four sides. Get some small ones and some bigger ones. So I'm going to start with his face. I'm going to go all the way around. doesn't really matter how I lay this because, like I said, there's going to be fur put on top and this is just to give me that surface that I can glue fur onto and also paint if I have to paint. Okay? And then just lay it on. I'll do as much as I can on this side and then I'll set it to dry 
once it's dry I can turn it over into the other side. And the great part about this stage is that paper dr towel dries pretty fast so we won't have to wait long. And if you get to a difficult spot like the nostrils where you're having troubles working in that area and everything's all wet around it just let everything dry and then come back and do it and you'll find it much easier that way. So I put a coat of paper towel on him. I actually put two coats so I went over him once and then I went over him again. Um, I just find it makes it super solid that way. You don't have to do it that way, it's just something I felt like I wanted to do. And then underneath you can see this part because I wrapped it around and just I didn't look what I was doing and I just left it. There's a part that wasn't pushed down so I'm just going to take that off. There's another piece there. Yeah, however it dries is how it's going to stay permanently so you want to make sure that you have it laying the way you want it to lay before you leave it dry. But it's not a big deal. I mean, it's very, very fixable. And I have to do the underside of them yet today anyway. And when I do the underside, I'm going to make sure that I overlap this seam here where the old paper towel is. I'm going to make sure I overlap that so that it sucks those seams down and together forever. You'll notice if you leave your bowl of glue covered overnight that it might be a bit thicker in the morning, like mine is right now. So I'm going to put a little bit more water in mine. See, there's the original paper towel there. I want to overlap that seam. And I forgot to mention that you want to work out any air bubbles, of course. Just push those out. Uh, little wrinkles like this is not a big deal because that's going to be covered in the fur and you won't see those. Um, the part that you're going to paint, of course, you want to make sure you work out the wrinkles. Like this part here. Uh, but the rest of it is fine. It'll be covered with the fur. The paper towel, once it's completely dry, you'll see the, the masking tape through it. So it turns into the color of the masking tape. And this is dry to the touch, but it's still drying underneath. Because anything that's white, that just means the glue isn't totally dry. But you can still paint that. Once it's dry to the touch, you can go ahead and paint it. Alright guys, last night before I went to bed, I tried out something. And I glued on some, it's like a burlap material and it's actually worked out really nicely. I like the texture of it. I don't know if I really like that color that I've painted on there, but uh, I can think more about that later. Anyway, this is not necessary to the project, of course, and this is just me adding texture. <laughs> you definitely don't have to do this, but I use tacky glue and it works really, really well, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to piece together the back end here. Oops. So it's real important to do the edges. So on top of that burlap I did black paint and then after the black was dried brushed on the pink and tried to just brush it on the surface and not get into all the little cracks and what's left behind is a whole bunch of little scales so I thought that was pretty cool. And I could have worked more, I could have spent more time on that to make it look even cooler but I think once I have the fur on and stuff that's going to look really awesome. Alright, so there's two coats of white on him, black inside the nostrils, did around the mouth, touched up underneath the lip there, and then did the varathane so it looks like it's wet. And then for the eyes, I just made a couple of eyeball shapes. I will cover them in tape first. And in order to make these paintable eyeballs, we have to cover them in the paper towel. If you have a stick pin, if not, you can use a toothpick as well, just to hold these up. And I'm going to put them in my masking tape. And just work out the wrinkles the best you can and you can leave that dry. And I'll do two coats or three, however many it takes to stop the cracking of the paint. Of course we're not worried about the underside because those will be glued into his head. For the eye color I mixed a Christmas red and a cinnamon brown. Uh, the Christmas red is just like a bright red. You don't have to get the exact one. So I'm actually using a paint pen, but you can use a black felt pen. And I did three coats of that reddish brown color. And then I'm going to add my Varathane. And again, if you don't have any, you can use a clear nail polish. Make sure to work out as many wrinkles as you can because you want to have a smooth eye. And this is where you could work with clay as well, guys. I'm using straight up foil for the whole thing just so people can see that it can be done. But if you have uh, clay, it might be easier for yourself to do it with clay. So I really have to work out those wrinkles. When I was building my foil ball, 
I would kind of smooth it out on the table, like rock it back and forth. And when I put the masking tape on there as well, I would do the same thing, kind of smooth it out on the table to get out as many wrinkles as I could. And they look pretty smooth, but you have to work at it. And this is just so the, the eye sits in just a little ways. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue these in. Okay, I'm gonna fill in around his eyes a bit, uh, just to fill in that space okay. I have. So I just filled in the, the real dip part here with foil, and I used the hot glue. Now I'm gonna cover it up with the tape. Okay, so we put the bottom eyelid on first, so I'll go ahead and I'll shape that. I'm going to use tacky glue and hot glue together and when you're doing these pieces don't make them too thick because they'll just get too bulky and they'll look funny. So if I wanted to add a little bit of a wrinkle, just add another piece and wrinkle it up. And the other heads up is the lid is quite tall and I did that on purpose so I could have that painted look on top of the lid and then I could glue the fur on top. So you don't have to worry about how high it is because even if it's too high we can still cover it up with the fur and you won't tell. But this way if you give yourself enough lid to play around with you can really design fur around it and make it look pretty cool. And if you find the edges are too thick you can also peel away some of it and trim on the inside and then stick the piece back together. So don't be afraid to make things fit because I don't really want to remake this whole eyelid again. Just don't want to do that, so. All right, guys, I am editing right now and I realized I should have spent a little bit more time on that top lid just to show you how I designed it. You can design it however you feel you want to, but you can see certain things in there that I didn't show you up close. I'm gonna do that right now. So first of all, the top lid and the bottom lid, I made very thin because the first time around I made them way too thick and they, they just looked very bulky and weird. So I kept them as thin as possible. So I just fold over a piece of foil, but that's the last fold. And then the rest of it's just gonna be how I bend it around the eye. So it kind of looks like that shape there. Okay, and then you want to cover it with the tape, of course. And I didn't show the bottom part here, the not the bottom lid, but the bottom of the top lid had a little bit of a ridge on it. And it was just by me putting my fingernail at the very bottom and just shaping upward, or pushing upward, I should say. And then when I got the paper towel on there, I shaped it even a little bit more, so I'd have a little bit of a ridge there. And that was just so I could get some eyelashes on there. So once you have the paper towel on there, you can also um, shape it a little bit more. Even after it's glued in place, I still pushed it around in there. And it kind of shaped the eye a little bit more after it was glued in place. The other thing I didn't mention, I don't think anyway, I repainted the eye after I had the eyelids on because I had to make them this part here, this colored part, bigger. So this step here is totally unnecessary. Um, just something I'm going to do just to add a bit of sparkle. And I do tone down this pink after this nail polish is dry. I'm just going to dry brush this on just lightly on the surface and just it'll leave some of that pink behind and also a little bit of sparkle. So right now I'm thinking that I'm going to have to fix his nose. Looking at his pictures online, I'm just like, I got the nose all wrong. So, so to fix an issue like a nose, I'm just going to take a knife to it. All right, so I just removed all the pieces that I wanted out and then covered up the exposed foil with the masking tape. And I've just created the bump of the nose. I'm going to hot glue this in and I'm gonna do some paper towel work in there before I add the nostrils, because again, that'll just make it easier for me. Right, his nose looks a little bit better. Could have been great, but you know, not bad for a fix up. And now I'm just adding cheekbones and I'm just looking at a picture of his and trying to figure out where those cheekbones are. So again, just hot gluing the foil in place. Once all that's figured out, I'll cover it in the masking tape and paper towel and let it dry. All right, so we got a little bit more dimension in his face now. 
And again, look at pictures, guys, and follow that. I had a little bit of struggles because I'm filming as well, so I'm, I'm tending to overthink every little thing that I'm doing. <laughs> and it kind of sucks away a little bit of my own creativity because I'm trying to be as helpful as I can, but it, it just, it takes away something from what I'm doing as well. And because I want him to turn out so good, uh, because I know he's a beloved character, right? So I'm doing my best, guys. <laughs> Get all emotional. All right, so the technique that I use for uh, adding fur is one that I use on tiny little creatures like this, and it works super well. This is the first time I've ever done a big, big guy. Yeah, a couple things I'll pass along. Okay, so for the first time I ever saw someone use yarn as fur, it was the Sugar Charm shop, and that was years ago. I don't think she's uploading videos anymore, but I believe her videos are still on YouTube. And she made a little tiny bug, and she added fur using yarn. So that's what um, got me started with yarn for fur. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed doing this bigger guy is that there's a lot of dust that comes off of here. So if you're sensitive to that, you might want to wear a mask. I've never noticed it when making these little guys, but probably because I only use a tiny bit of yarn. So I never noticed it. But last night when I finished doing his body, <laughs> there was a layer of yarn dust all over my desk and my camera. So wear a mask if you're sensitive, please. And popping in with a quick edit, just to give you a heads up. In the next clip, I'm going to show you how I attach the yarn fur to his head. And you saw that I already done it to the body. And I'm not sure if that was the right order to do it in. Like, I mean, as far as sequence goes, I'm not sure if I should have uh, glued the sequence down first and then added the yarn fur. I don't know. Um, it's kind of up in the air for me because I think it looks great the way it turned out. But the one thing I will tell you that I shouldn't have done was add these longer bits of fur before I added the sequence because I kind of battled with that later. So... It's up to you if you want to do the sequence first and then the fur, or the fur and then the sequence. I'm going to leave that up to you. But I will tell you, don't add the long bits before you add the sequence. Do that last. And now we'll get back to the video, and I'll show you how I attach the fur to his body. So what I do is just wrap the yarn around my hand in a manageable bundle. And by manageable, I mean I'm going to have to clip through the bundle that I make. So I tend to do smaller bundles like this because your fingers get tired after a while. So you just keep snipping in little bits. And I find these smaller bundles just easier to cut through. Okay, I'm just doing little sections. I'm just going to brush this in an even layer. Then we're just going to take bunches and we're just going to push it into the glue and really push it in. And once you have it completely covered, all the glue covered, go over it again with your hand and just push it in. Really smush it into that glue. And after we make sure we smush it into the glue, now we're going to leave it sit. Now I always put the fan on mine and I leave it for about a half an hour. Alright, and then after a half an hour goes by, you can go ahead and brush off the uh, fur and the excess will come off. What's left behind will be his new coat of fur. And if there's any bare spots, you can go over them with glue and more fur again, or more yarn, I should say. When I've done little ones in the past, I always say just toss out uh, the leftovers because there might be, you know, stuff from your bristles in there, or you might have little hard bits. But I've noticed with this guy, because I took extra time to really squish that fur in there, whatever comes off is pretty much usable. So I've been reusing all the stuff that's come off. But just check and see the first batch that comes off, because if your, br if your brush is old and it's got whatever in it and it comes off then you'll be frustrated picking all that stuff out of your fur. When I first started him I was going to do a darker pink in here on the bottom half of his stomach and the bottom half of his tail and I totally forgot I was going to do that and I went and glued the, the fur on. But you can see the color does show behind that fur. But yeah if I were to remember that that would have looked really cool there. Oh well I'll figure out something else for that spot. But yeah now I'll go over and I'll check for any bare spots like right here. I could add a bit more glue right there, stick some more fur in, and just tap it down and wait until it dries. So that's what I'll be doing next. You can also trim up any longer bits that are stuck. So now I'm just doing a little bit of detail work, and I'm going to use some of that sparkly ribbon. So beautiful. The metallic, it really shines when you turn it in a light. So I put one here already. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, I'm going to put one over here on this side. And you'll notice I did paint because I had some pink there. I decided to paint over that. And I am putting fur too, so I'll just do the whole thing while I'm here. I 
and I'll put fur everywhere there except for I'll leave this little space clear of the fur. Just figuring out the ears now. This one here, I shaped it to fit around the shoulder. And it's very thin, as you can see. Alright guys, just popping in with an edit just to be clear that the top of the ear, I did create this little narrow part here. And that part is going to be shoved inside the head. So I've given myself a little extra ear on the top so I can push it into the head. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, cover this with a tape and then the paper towel, and then when we come back, I will have already painted this two coats of white. Alright, so I did the two coats of paint, let it dry, and I've already got the back on. Okay, so I just cut a small square off my rug, because a smaller square is easy to uh, have on my desk here. And I'll just keep cutting until it's empty, and then I'll get another square. Okay, and I just separate a layer. So when you're putting them on, you just want to make sure that the fibers are all going in the same direction. And of course, they're going to go down. So I'm going to put an even bead of glue about a half an inch up from the bottom, straight across. I'm going to put the ends just above that bead, because when I push it down, I don't want to get stuck in the glue. Which is very easy to happen if you don't watch where that bead is. And I just push right above it with something other than my finger. Otherwise, you're going to get really frustrated because your finger gets stuck. <laughs> And when you pull it away, you get a bunch of fibers going with you. So right above that bead, and I'm just pushing on the other side of it. And my thumb is on this side, so it has no other choice but to get squished into that glue without us touching the glue. And the wonderful thing about tacky glue is it grabs on pretty fast, so you don't have to wait too long. We'll just get the other bit on there, and then we can go over it and push it down. So I put a bead of glue about a half an inch up from the top edge of the first row. And I'll do that all again. Okay, and after I got to the top, this is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave this much free because I'm going to finish that when I get it onto the head. Um, I set it underneath the fan for about five or six minutes, and then I did the one edge. So I'll do this edge now, and I'll run a bead of glue up the edge. And I got a small little bundle. I'm going to lay it over. Okay, and this one's a little bit tricky. I, I did the whole edge without getting my fingers in the glue. And if you can, get your finger on either side, pushing down, and then pinch. And just a little ways up from that one. Lay this one in, and then pinch it. Oh, I got my finger in the glue there. Alright guys, now we're going to install the ear, and this part here, most of that is going to be pushed inside the head. So I'm just going to determine where it's going to go. And if we mess this up, it's okay. I can always put some glue in there and cover it up with the fur. So this ear is installed. It looks great that coming out of there. It's still drying, so I'm going to leave that one alone. So when I got this slit open, I did take my scissors and I just pushed them in there. and just push all the foil out of the way so you can get the ear in there, no problem. And I also had to use my pliers and turn in the sides so it would fit in there nice. I'll put on an abundance of glue on this side and this side. Just going to shove some fur under here so I can make the ear stand up a little bit better. That one has no problem standing up because it's um, sitting on the shoulder. So it's got a little bit more help. So when you put the yarn in there, push it into the hole. feels better already. And now I'm going to put a bit more glue on here and I'll shove the yarn into that side. I 
I just took another look at his pictures and his ears kind of hang down a little bit more droopy than I had them so I just pushed them down a bit and now I'm just going to set that under it just to kind of hold it in that position so it doesn't fall anymore and then once it's dry it'll be stuck in that one position so I'm going to leave it now they look great I'm in love with those and now I'm going to work on his eyebrows So when you're putting the fur on, you want to start at the furthest point away and work your way in so you're layering the right way, just like we did the ear. And I got this started as well, and I've already uh, attached the two back layers, and I'll keep going up to here, I think. Keep something to wipe your glue nozzle off with because it does get pretty gummy fast from the fibers getting stuck to it, and then you end up with a big string of gum. <laughs> and that gets a little frustrating. Okay, I'll start in the back. And you'll notice that putting the fur down onto the yarn is a lot easier than just doing it on paint. And you don't get your fingers stuck in as much glue attaching it to the, uh, to the yarn itself. I'm going to leave that for a bit. I'm going to work down here and let's get this part done. And again, we're going to work from the furthest point out and we'll come in and then we work from down here and in. So I had to take some liberties in his uh, fur placement because this part here is a bit hard, obviously, because the materials I used and it's got a, a hardness look to it. So I tried to soften it up by adding some longer bits here and it really helped a lot. Now I know in his pictures online he doesn't have that sort of thing, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And I made his beard a little bit longer than it is online as well. Alright, so when we put this longer fur on, it's a little bit different than the ear because I'm putting the ends of the fur or these longer bits of fur right into the glue. I'm not putting it over top that bead like I did on the ear. I only did that for the ear because it's laying flat anyway and it goes down and it's just easier not to get your fingers stuck in the glue if you do it the way I showed you. But for these ones um, over the fur like this and on his body I put it right in. I put the ends right into the glue itself and then I just tap it down. And again, just make sure that the fibers are going in the right direction. Okay, so the ends right into that glue. Then you can just tap it down. And once it's dry, honestly, I have taken a vacuum to this guy already. And I'll show you that at the end here. And as you can see, like I'm putting extra here, but I, I really didn't need it. Um, the fur over top the yarn looks like he has a full coat of fur. And I hardly put any on there. Like you saw me do this one here. There's really not that much put in there. But it looks like it's full. So it's a, it's a cool process. Just put it where I think there's a bit of a bare spot. Ends right into that glue. And tap it down.
All right, so we got that longer fur attached on top of the spine. And then I did a bead of glue and just dropped the sequence into that bead of glue all the way down. And now I'm going to repeat that with another uh, string of sequins. Now remember, when I started this project, I pulled the sequence off this ribbon. And I was working with a limited amount of sequins. So when you saw me gluing them down, I kind of had spaced them out a little bit. But I ended up with more uh, sequins in the end that I could use. So I did stick some in, the, in between those lines. And then I also went ahead and stuck some fur in between the lines as well to kind of make it look a little less sparse. And again, I'm not sure if I should have <laughs> glued those on on top of that yarn fur or on top of the paint. But I'll leave that up to you. I, I do think it turned out really well, and I'm not sure I would do it differently. But, yeah. So, Alright, so it's working out with the fur in between those lines. It's actually turning out okay. I'm okay with that. Um, down here, I've mentioned I think twice now that I really wish I would have painted behind there before I put the fur but I didn't. Anyway, I just mixed skin tone with some pink and some water and I'm gonna try. Well, I hope I don't mess this up now. <laughs> All right, guys, I am now working on his eyelashes, and I'm going to get to that in the next clip, but first, let's finish up the last clip. So I ended with me rubbing that paint in, and it actually turned out really cool. So what I did was I painted it on. You saw me rubbing it in with my thumb, and I rubbed pretty hard so I can get underneath that yarn, and I kept going, and it's shorter. The line starts shorter here and works its way up to about here. So I kept rubbing that paint in, and as I was doing that, the yarn was piling, so I just took it off. So whatever bits were piling, I took it off. There's a little bit of yarn left behind there, and it's hard now. Okay, and then once I had the paint on, I left it dry. So I left it for about a half an hour under the fan. Once it was all dry, then I did my bead of glue along that line and just added my longer bits of fur. So some things to keep in mind that if you don't want to do that after the fact, you might want to paint that before you add your yarn. Alright guys, I already filmed this once and I had to actually pull off the bundle that I glued on because I started at the wrong end. So I originally started here, but they'll look better if you start on the outside and work in. So start on the outside. I just take a little bit of tacky glue. I'm going to go on the very edge of the eyelid on the outer edge. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bundle and cut at the base. Okay, I'm going to put glue on the very end, on the top side, and I'll flip it over and I'll do the back side as well. Okay, I'm going to use a little tool. So I'll put it right underneath the lid, and then I'm going to put my tool right underneath those fibers and push up. And once they're up, and then I'm going to use my fingernail and get the lashes to go around the corner and into that glue that I put on the outer edge. So I'm going to leave them now for about five minutes. I'm going to set the fan on it actually. Make sure that tacky glue really grabs on before I continue on down the rest of the eyelashes. So now my big decision is, should I trim those or leave them long? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I don't know if I'll decide that before this video ends, but yeah, there you go. And I would suggest doing that because there will be, you know, some little fibers that didn't quite make it into the glue and you want to get those out so it doesn't shed. And after you take the vacuum to them, just look them over. And if there's any clumps missing that uh, were pulled out from the vacuum, go ahead and just add in a bit more. 
And that All right, so now that we've got the dragon done, we can make a little character. Now you can make any character that you want to make. You can make the ones from the movie. And I was kind of planning that in the beginning, but then I quickly changed my mind because this story is actually my youngest son's, one of his favorite stories. And we watched the movie together countless times. Uh, along with my daughter, but my son really, really liked the dragon. So what I did was make a miniature version of him when he had longer hair. My son just had his hair cut, but he used to have long hair. So I did a miniature version of him. He's made with all the same materials. So foil, masking tape, paper towel, and I used some yarn for his hair. And his video should be uploaded very shortly. It's already filmed and edited. I just have to get it up to YouTube. And depending on when you're watching this video, it will be popping up on the screen or it will be in the pinned comment below. Alright my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. I surely enjoyed making him and I'm totally in love with him. And I would love to see yours. If you ever do make one, please post pictures on my Facebook page or tag me on Instagram. And again, those links are found in the pinned comment below. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next one.